And this is exercise 7-3. We're going to work with filled regions, and we've done this a little bit before. We are in a drafting view right now, so this was our AutoCAD view that we imported into Revit. We're going to work with that. Um, the file that you're working with is exercise 7-1. To start, we're going to activate the stair rail bottom detail view. So we have stair rail bottom detail. We want to select all of the text in here. So one way that you could do that is you can hold down control and then click on all the text. You could draw a window around the text to select it like that as well, which is a little bit faster. If you select from left to right, it's only grabbing certain elements, whereas you draw from right to left, it will grab everything in its path. Now we're going to use the type selector in the properties panel. We want to change the text to one quarter inch city blueprint. Okay, so now you can see how the text has changed over here. We're going to activate the annotate ribbon and we're going to select detail component. So you'll see component and then under that detail component. We're going to select the break line on the type selector over here, the break line, and we're going to use the space bar to rotate that break line. And we want to place the break line on either side of this floor. So that just is indicating that that material is continuing on in the drawing but that they're not drawing the entire floor because that kind of takes up too much space. Okay, so now notice when I place this one, it placed this white box. I actually should have flipped that. So I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to place another detail component and I'm just going to make sure that when I rotate it, whoops, I rotate it the right way, which I just did wrong again. So I'm going to delete that one and then move this one down. There we go. So it's a white box after and actually that would allow you to to blank out. Um, I'll show you. So if I pulled this up here, I could pull this arrow and then it would take away everything that was behind that box. I don't want to do that though, so I'm just going to hit undo. But just to show you, that's what that did. Oops, and then I hit redo for that. All right, so now I have my break lines on either side of my floor. And one thing I just want you to notice too is that when we change that text in the font, like everything started to overlap and really we should go back and fix this because it's quite sloppy but the instructions aren't focusing on that right now. So let's go down to the next step. We're going to select the filled region tool. So up here in region, if we click, we'll see filled region. We're using the rectangle tool right here. We want to trace that floor area. So I'm going to use the rectangle and I want to trace around this floor area. And then it says in the properties box in the type selector, we're going to select floor filled region. So let's see, here's the fill region, filled region floor. So there we go. And we're going to hit the green check mark to finish that. Now you'll see that this hatch pattern is displayed. We're going to select that filled region again, so region, filled region, and we want to fill the two circles that we see here. And these circles, what they're indicating is that there can only be a certain amount of space between these balusters, um, and then there can only be a certain amount of space between the tread and then the bottom of the railing. And that's so that children don't get their heads stuck in between here. So. <laughs> That's per code that that's listed. But anyway, we're just selecting a filled region, so I'm going to use the pick lines tool, and then I'm going to pick this circle, and I'm going to pick this circle. And then I want to select in the filled region, do not pass sphere, and I'm going to hit the green check mark. All right, so now those two circles have filled and they're red. Okay, we're going to select the filled region again. And we're going to use the pick line tool to select the riser, stringer, and tread lines. So all of oop, all of this stuff. Actually, I think it just got something I didn't want me to hit on do. So this is the riser. This is the tread. This horizontal part. Vertical part's the riser. Horizontal is the tread. And then this is the stringer right here. 
And then we're going to use the line tool to close the gap. So just make sure that you select the endpoint to endpoint, and then you can close the gaps. All right, so now we have our entire stringer selected. We're going to come over here and select treads, and then we're going to hit the green check mark. And it filled it with this kind of earth pattern that's strange. <laughs> But you can see that all the hatches have now been displayed. So you have a hatch here, here, and here, and here. Now I can tell you that this hatch pattern is not quite right for right here, but it's just trying to get across the point of how you use the hatch patterns. Um, so that's the end of that exercise.